patch 2.1 for Cyberpunk 2077 drops just last week, and with this, we got several unmarked and secret quests to be discovered. The new highway finally opened up. You can access it here on the map, and as you go to the entrance, you'll see all kinds of construction equipment around. But if you do drive onto the highway, you'll very quickly find Trauma Team, an all-out conflict with 10 to 15 Tiger Claws right in the middle of the road. As you approach, you'll have a bit of a choice to side with either Trauma Team or the Tiger Claws, or technically side with neither and just take out everybody. But once the fight is over, you can get some background from a bunch of the shards scattered throughout. The Tiger Claws here actually targeted this convoy to capture somebody named Schultz. This person was fleeing Night City with some sensitive data stored in their head. The Tiger Claws interrupted that, and that's how this fight with Trauma Team broke out. And after the fight, you could even find Schultz himself being tended to by Trauma Team. You can find another shard with Trauma Team requesting backup after their AVs were shot down by the Tiger Claws. But this request was denied by Trauma Team management because Schultz only had a gold plan, which means he only gets two AVs and those two are already here. A pretty hilarious message, and in another shard you could see Schultz making sure his Trauma Team subscription was upgraded to Platinum, which would have allowed backup to come, but seemingly the buyer lied about this upgrade going through. And if you do side with Trauma Team, a few days after this quest, you'll even get a text from Caroline thanking you for your help and mentioning how Schultz survived as a result of our intervention. But that isn't the only secret quest to add with Patch 2.1. If you travel over to Pinewood Junction over on the north side of the map, and then run to the left side of this Cyber Matrix building, you'll be able to find a newly added dead Arasaka soldier with a sword sticking out of them. There'll be blood spots all around, and while the soldier themselves is unscannable with their data being erased, you can scan these blood spots and eventually follow them to find answers. As a short distance away, you'll find another downed Arasaka soldier who had their data erased as well. But for me, this soldier is alive, and in my game, begging us to leave him alone and even asking to live. Upon killing him, you can find a shard that basically explains what exactly went on here. These two were best friends, and one was tasked to take out the other, and we're seeing the aftermath of a fierce battle and really an epic duel to the death. As far as I can tell, this sword is not lootable, but another really cool scene to find. With patch 2.1, CDPR added in new vehicle chases, so after doing certain things in the game, enemies may chase you down as a result of your actions. But what I found many people not realizing is, if you stop and take down these enemies that are chasing you, many of them will drop a shard that explains why they are chasing you. Like here, you can find this neatly typed up message describing the hit Arasaka put on me for kidnapping Hanako Arasaka, and the type of message will dramatically change based off who is chasing you. So here, as I look at this Maelstrom shard, it's incredibly different compared to the Arasaka one. Or even this Tiger Claws attack where members mention their boss as their main motivation. And a pretty fun aspect of this is, if you use a bunch of black wall weapons after finishing Phantom Liberty, this too will trigger a response as Netwatch is unhappy about you using black wall weapons in Night City. But did you know that there are also some new secret interactions with your partner after they come over to your apartment? But oh, what's that on the wall? Well, that's today's video sponsor, Displate. Displate has some incredibly high quality metal posters for all of your favorite franchises. It's a great year for games, and what's a better way to represent them on your wall than with a Displate? But of course, they also have a ton of options for cyberpunk and even some really nice new Phantom Liberty options. But if you're interested in one of these, you have to act fast, as today is the last day you can order to make sure you get it by Christmas, and also the final day of their super sale. These make a perfect last minute gift, and you can pick one up with my affiliate link down below. But looking back at some of the new romance interactions, after inviting your partner over to your apartment, there are a few things you could do here. If you take a shower, they will join you, and perhaps this is the most romantic option of the bunch. A nice detail of this is, after the shower, the character will be in a change of clothes, typically something a bit comfier compared to whatever they were originally wearing. And this could be incredibly handy depending on what exactly you two are going to do next. But there are also a variety of events that could happen in the mirror. Here you can see Judy sneaking up on me trying to scare me, or even just the good old slap. Or River giving me a massage, I think. It doesn't really look like a very good massage, but hey, it's the effort that counts. And then Panam just giving me a good old kiss on my metal cheek. For better or for worse, if you want these various interactions to occur, you will have to trigger these all from the starter apartment. You can't use any of the DLC apartments, unfortunately. And to go along with this, there's even a new text chain with your romance partners. At some point in the game, you'll get a new text from a delivery service offering flowers or a toy car for purchase. You can buy this for your romance partner, and if you're picking one and doing so, your partner will respond thanking you. Overall, the new text chains themselves are very short and to the point, but I still think this is a pretty nice addition, especially around the holiday season. But then, what is easily my favorite of the new secret additions with patch 2.1 is the new ARG references. If you go out by the solar farms on the outskirts of Night City, and specifically go to the center of this central solar farm, you'll find a new 
Netwatch crime scene, and this is all a giant reference to the now complete Cyberpunk 2077 ARG. On the ground, you'll find the body of Gassut, who was shot in the spine. This is the admin of the FF06B5 Discord server, not only put in a ton of effort to discovering new things around the mystery, but also did a phenomenal job documenting all of the progress and making it very easy to read on the wiki. Next to the crime scene is Netwatch Mobile Command, and within you can find a shard of an archived conversation between Sandra Dorset and Redacted. Sandra Dorset mentions hacking the Corp Thing account, to which the other person responds, saying they are tracking down Sandra. Sandra Dorset is that girl you save at the start of Cyberpunk 2077 and comes back at her own quest and even again in Phantom Liberty. But if you follow the Cyberpunk 2077 ARG, Sandra Dorset was also communicating with real world ARG players on both Reddit and Discord, including using this Reddit account named Corp Thing, which is what she mentions hacking here. And this is quite the throwback as all of this happened all the way back in 2019. So as somebody who followed this all along the way and as this was happening, it's really awesome to see this getting added in game in a proper way. There's also a desktop in the room with some back and forth messages discussing the hunt for Sandra Dorset by Netwatch. And in one of the messages, there's a list of collaborating Netrunners, and these are the 20 people to successfully complete the Cyberpunk 2077 ARG. After tons of decoding and uncovering, the ARG ended with one big quiz. And these are the first 20 users to answer that quiz correctly, and they even just got a bunch of t-shirts sent to them as a reward. And funny enough, when it comes to referencing Cyberpunk mysteries in game, that actually isn't all. Cyberpunk 2077 had a second giant mystery with FF06B5. If you go to Arasaka Tower and specifically look for this restricted entrance right around here on the map, once enter and keep to the right and you're going to find this new FF06B5 mural on the wall. This mural depicts the ending scene of the mystery, as we as players are presented the cube and even in that scene you can see the moon glows pink. This color of pink is what FF06B5 is as a color code. I think both of these are truly awesome additions. I really like that CDPR is not only giving recognition to the ARGs themselves, just being really cool things that happened around the game, but also acknowledging some of the players that made this all possible and really put in a lot of the work to find the solutions. Now funny enough, CDPR has referenced this mystery, specifically with FF06B5, more times than you may have realized. Cyberpunk 2077 recently had this big Times Square ad around being able to play it on a Chromebook. But if you look closely in the eye of the character, there are core coordinates. And if you use these in game, it'll be the coordinates of the mattress where the ending of FF06B5 can be found. If you want a proper explanation on both of these mysteries, you can check out my video on the subject. With patch 2.1, 10 new iconic weapons were added into the game, four of which you're able to find in the world, and six more that would drop from airdrops in Dogtown. And you'll probably want some of these new weapons, as a fair few have some pretty unique designs and mechanics tied to them. The Achilles X Mod 2 is super easy to get. Go to this point across from the Heavy Hearts Club in Dogtown. You want to get up to this second walkway level, and you can do this via some stairs off to the side. Once up here, simply follow this path all the way to the back, and you'll find this secret area that you'll have to navigate and crouch to get through. But once in the back room, you'll find the Achilles X Mod 2 simply sitting on this bed, and you can loot it for yourself. There are a bunch of X Mod 2 weapons in Cyberpunk 2077, and all of these have the unique effect of allowing you to apply weapon mods onto an iconic. Typically, you can't apply weapon mods to an iconic. And these newly added ones each have the exact same effect of increasing headshot damage and increasing armor penetration while allowing you to apply two mods. And after getting the Achilles, you can grab the new Claw X Mod 2 as well. This one's going to just be at the top of the Heavy Hearts Club. Simply climb up to the top and you'll find it sticking out of the center of the pyramid. This also has the two mod slots as well as a headshot damage bonus as well as more armor penetration, but also an added bleed chance, making it pretty good as a throwing weapon if you could land headshots with it. There's also an X Mod MA70 HB. This one is just behind Heavy Hearts. It's going to be on this elevated section. You'll find it within the crashed helicopter, but you'll need to pass this body check to get the door open. This new LMG has a handy scope pre-installed and does increase damage with headshots and does also have inbuilt armor penetration. So okay, three pretty similar weapons in different weapon categories. If you want something a bit more unique, you also have the BFC 9000. You can find this one on the dam in Night City. The best way to get it is to travel to the dam lookout and then just take a drive along this road until you get here. You're going to find this parking lot sitting here. Once in the parking lot, simply jump over these 
rocks and you'll discover a man near a crashed AV. That man is holding the BFC 9000 so you can take him down and get it for yourself. And this is going to be a bigger blacker version of some other iconics in Night City and this thing absolutely pounds. The unique effect on the BFC 9000 makes it so when you have above 50% stamina, your crit chance increases by 69%. Nice. But the weapon will also have a flat 69% increase on attack speed as well as 50% more range as this black variant is going to be notably longer and stronger because strong attacks also deal 10% more damage. The name of this is of course a reference to the Doom series where you have the BFG 9000, but overall this is a great melee weapon that I highly recommend everyone trying. I believe there are even some in real life variants that are worth trying as well. And the mini backstory that they give at the crash site only adds the overall allure. Outside of that, there are six more weapons added to the game and you'll just randomly find these from airdrops in Dogtown. The way these work is each weapon is named after a dog and all of them have the same effect or at least pretty close to the same effect. Sometimes the stat bonus is slightly different. So all the weapons will have the built-in increase to headshot damage and armor penetration, but then a special iconic effect of dealing more damage the faster your movement speed. And your movement speed increases with each subsequent kill or dismemberment you could do with this new set of weapons. All six of these weapons have this effect, but they're going to be different types. So you could use things like an SMG or rifle or a shotgun or even a tech sniper rifle. Obviously things like the SMG and shotgun I think have the best synergy with the unique effect from these, but overall a really fun group of weapons that again you could find in Dogtown, but for better or worse these are just random, you have to clear through a bunch of airdrops to find them all. One secret change that is unfortunately going to impact a lot of you is with patch 2.1 finishers broke in Cyberpunk 2077, so now when using a melee weapon instead of a wide array of brutal finishers potentially occurring, it's just going to be this one. This is obviously a bug, but thankfully modders have already fixed it. So with the aptly named patch 2.1 finisher fix, you too can have all of your finishers restored until CDPR releases an official fix. Sonic Shock also received a gigantic nerf with this update. This wasn't covered anywhere in the patch notes, and honestly, it's not entirely clear if this is intentional or a bug as of right now, but previously, Sonic Shock would allow you to disconnect enemies from their network. So as long as you upload Sonic Shock first, all of your subsequent quick hacks on that enemy would become untraceable. So you'd be a proper stealth netrunner sitting in the shadows just taking down enemies one by one. Except now, that's not a thing. Even if you upload Sonic Shock first, enemies will now be able to trace you after. And now balance-wise, this is not the end of the world if you're in the mid to late game, you can use other quick hacks like higher tiers of memory wipe to achieve the exact same non-tracing effect. But for early game builds, this is absolutely brutal and it basically removes true stealth net running from the game, at least for the early part of the game. Because when it comes to memory wipe, it only actually makes things untraceable if you have higher tiers, which you simply can't get in the first 10 to 20 levels. Sonic Shock still does make it harder for enemies to hear you and it makes them invisible to other enemies. So like here, I take this guy out and nobody reacts because I did upload Sonic Shock to them. But to me, this is a genuinely bizarre undocumented change that again, isn't entirely clear if it's a bug or just a balance pass. Another undocumented nerf is the sale price of quick hacks was severely cut with this update. Here in patch 2.02, you can see me selling tier 4 quick hacks for tens of thousands of eddies. The ultimate ones are fetching around 25,000, which made this a great money making method as you could loot these off of enemy netrunners. But with patch 2.1, the same process brings this down to hundreds of eddies instead of tens of thousands. This ultimate tier 4 will only sell for a bit over 1,000 eddies for a 90% decrease in sale price. And this becomes particularly rough when you look at how much it'll cost to buy that quick hack back. And I feel like this is almost not even a nerf, but more of just a feature removal. There is now basically no point to selling quick hacks for eddies and trying to farm these. It is no longer lucrative at all. And although those were definitely brutal for some of you that were relying on a net running playstyle, CDPR also had their nice little own troll to the fans with this update. After getting the new Porsche, you'll find this cryptic coded shard. And many assume this would connect to the ARG or even FF06B5 since those also got some additions with this update, but in reality, no, what this is is just coordinates to a real-life Porsche dealer which you could find after decoding the shard. So yeah, a pretty hilarious one from CDPR, but with that in mind, if you're interested in more Cyberpunk content, check out this video to discover how modders are adding multiplayer into Cyberpunk.